Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about comments that have been made in some of my past videos when I was talking about the 45 Super and 45 ACP and 10 millimeter. Many of you guys commented, Mac, you need to check out the 460 Roland. Now, I'm not into Wildcat cartridges. I'm not into oddball cartridges that I can't just walk into a local gun store and buy ammunition for. And so I've always known about the 460 Roland, but I didn't ever have any experience with one until you guys prompted me to contact the company and they sent out a gun so we could talk about it. Now, it's interesting because it's based on the 45 ACP, but it has some fundamental differences. And we're going to talk about those differences in this video. We're going to do some ballistics gelatin tests, and then we're going to do some other tests that kind of paint a fuller picture of just how powerful this handgun cartridge is. Now, I do apologize for the fan in the background you guys might be hearing. It's 100 degrees outside with 100% humidity, so we're in the sweat box. But uh, hopefully most of that is inaudible to you and you guys can't hear it. With that being said, let's get started with today's video talking about this hand cannon. Very first shot. Here we go. That's nothing. That muzzle brake really tames it. Holy cow. I mean, it really pushes into the hand. You can see just two rounds in from the checkering. But that is nothing like what I expected. First two rounds. So here goes Jason's first shots with the 460 Roland. You can tell that's got some horsepower. <laughs> but it's not as bad as no. I thought it was going to be. Having a good carry holster makes the world of difference when you're concealed carrying a handgun. In my case, oftentimes I'll appendix carry and I need to find a holster that works for me. One holster that I found to be extremely good is JX Tactical. This is my appendix carry setup. This is my SIG P365XL Spectre Comp. This is my carry gun. And it's set up with a sub A light. You can see the ports on it. And this fits comfortably, snaps right in to the JX Tactical Kydex holster. And it's adjustable for height, so I can adjust the ride height. And so I have it setting pretty high to keep me from poking, being poked in the nether regions. But they have a whole bunch of different types of holsters. I picked this one out because I like the carbon fiber look and I like appendix carry and the ability to adjust that ride height. They have, a, again, a whole bunch of different holsters out there. Check out JX Tactical on the internet and pick out a holster that I think you're going to like for your new or old or existing carry gun. So this is my FNX and 460 Roland. This started life as a 45 ACP pistol. The guys over at 460 Roland worked their magic on it, made some upgrades, updates to the pistol so it can handle the immense pressure that the cartridge is capable of generating. And when I say immense, I'm not kidding, guys. This thing generates pressures I never thought possible out of a standard self-loading pistol. And we'll talk more about that in the next segment. So here's, both these guns are checked and empty. Here's the 460 Roland, easily identifiable by the muzzle brake that's on the end of it. It's been through the conversion process. And here's a standard FNX 45 for comparison. Most all the changes are done internally with the exception of the muzzle device. And the muzzle device is integral to the function of the gun because of those seriously high operating pressures, which means increased slide velocity. And you have to slow that slide down so it doesn't open up when the pressures are still high in the barrel. And that's a safety feature. So to convert this particular gun, what the guys did was, first of all, you have to put heavier mag springs into your magazine. So you gotta take those factory springs out and replace it with higher uh, tension springs that provide more power to push those rounds up. Why? Well, again, the slide velocity is quicker on the 460 Roland than it is on a 45 ACP. So if you don't have that increased magazine spring pressure, the slide can move back and go forward and override the round in the magazine because the spring didn't have enough time to get it up into uh, position so the slide could catch it and chamber it. So that's your first part with this particular conversion. The next part is you have a steel guide rod with a 24 pound recoil spring in it. So they've increased the recoil spring pressure. And that again is to keep that breech closed for as long as they possibly can. The barrel, the 460 Roland cartridge is slightly longer than 45 ACP. Therefore they take the factory barrel, ream it out so it can accept that slightly longer cartridge. And then finally on the end of the barrel, they put this muzzle brake compensator on it, which I must say is highly effective. And 
this adds additional barrel weight to the gun so when you put weight on the end of a barrel that has a tendency to retard or slow down uh, a browning action and if you put too much weight on a barrel it'll actually keep it from working think of a suppressor without a booster if you direct thread a can onto the barrel of a browning type action and you don't have a nielsen device or a booster on it it's just dead weight hanging on the end of the barrel the gun won't cycle too much weight on the end of the barrel but that's what this is doing it's it's designed so it can function it won't keep the gun from working but it's helping to delay the action from opening by that additional weight and then of course it provides the function of making it very much a pleasant gun to shoot everything else is the same on the gun so it's a very simple conversion conversion kits are available but some guns lend themselves to conversion better than others i've been told by the guys over at 460 roland so the fnx is one of their favorites and I'm, i agree the thing feels amazing in the hand and of course you know they've changed nothing it's the exact same grip size as the 45 gun and they did talk about a couple of guns that you can't convert to 460 Roland, and it's relatively interesting because one of them is the H&K series of 45 ACP pistols. They don't lend themselves well to the 460 Roland conversion because they don't support the case head enough, which will cause it to fail at the bottom and blow the magazine right out of the gun. So the HK is no good. The Smith & Wesson 45, the M&P series of handguns, they don't lend themselves well to the conversion because the pressure should is too much for the design and it will shear the bottom lugs off the barrel given enough rounds being fired. So they've extensively tested their conversion kits to make sure that they're safe with the particular gun that you're converting. And yes, you can just order the parts and put them in yourself or you can send the gun to them and they'll do all the conversion for you and send you back a complete gun, which is what happened with this particular FNX. So one of the reasons polymer framed guns like perhaps the glock 21 or the fnx these make particularly good hosts for this incredibly powerful cartridge and one key feature of that is the polymer frame it actually is a plus okay why do i say that well if you go back in time to the early 10 millimeters they cracked frames left right and center the uh, delta elite colts cracked frames the old smith and wesson 1006s you put enough hot ammunition through them, they crack frames. Polymer doesn't crack, it flexes. And that works great when you're dealing with a super high pressure cartridge like this one. And so the Glock and the FNX would be my two primary choices. Now you can do it to a 45 that has a steel frame. And again, it, it should be okay, but if you shoot a lot of super hot loads through that, you run the risk of cracking your frame. So if I was looking at buying another one of these, or if you're looking at picking one up, consider a polymer framed pistol because I think it's going to be your best option. Now let's talk about the ballistics and some of the interesting features of the 460 Roland that sets it apart from the competition. So let's talk about those pressures. This is where it gets really, really interesting. So if we start off talking about 10 millimeter, my pet cartridge, it has an operating pressure of about 37,500 PSI. That's pretty high. 9 millimeter peak pressure, and, and, and the pressures I'm going to give you are SAMI ma maximum pressures, okay? So you can load it below that, but these are the maximum pressures that SAMI says is safe for the particular cartridge. So 9 millimeter operates at 35,000 PSI. It's a pretty high strung little cartridge, and, and that's one of the reasons it's good. It's a good cartridge. The 10 millimeter, though, reaches that 37,500 PSI, which I always thought was pretty impressive. Uh, 44 Magnum doesn't even achieve what the 460 does in terms of pressures, and we'll get to that here in a minute. So if we take a look at the 45 ACP, the standard 45 ACP plus P is included. The max safe operating pressure is 19,900 PSI. Okay, so it's a relatively low pressure cartridge. Most ball cartridges and things like that are going to be something less than that. The plus P's are going to reach that close to 20,000 PSI. The 45 Super has an operating pressure of 28,000 PSI, and that's out of a standard 45 ACP case. Now the 45 Super can accidentally find its way into a standard 45. Some will handle it, some won't. The H&K USP, for example, can handle the, the 45 Super, but some other guns may not be able to handle it and it could damage the gun because, again, those higher operating pressures. But then when we get into the 460 Roland, guys, sit down for this one because when I first read it, I had to double check and triple check my numbers. 40,000 PSI twice the operating pressure of a standard 230 grain ball round plus p that is astonishing pe pressures for a handgun so you would walk away from that information thinking perhaps that this gun kicks like a horse 
it doesn't. Before we film any video or do anything like that, we shoot the guns and I videotaped my first experience shooting the 460 and then Jason uh, was, was videotaped as well. And the first thing I noticed was it doesn't kick much. Now, granted, I'm not recoil sensitive, but I also let my oldest son shoot the 460 and he's like, Dad, this doesn't hurt at all. And he was just wanting to shoot all the ammo I had. The ammo is unfortunately hard to find. You have to buy it online and it's pretty expensive stuff. Not too bad, is it? No. Doesn't it's hurt? Good. No, it does not hurt at all. It feels really good. I would shoot this all day if I could. <laughs> yeah. But he was able to shoot it. Jason loved it. He's, he, he fell in love with the FNX and the 460 because it is so pleasant. Now, again, a lot of that has to do with this muzzle device that's definitely working because there is plenty of pressure there to operate that compensator, okay? Many times, like 45 ACP, a compensator on a full-size 45 ACP is useless because it doesn't have enough operating pressure to really work the comp. That's not the case with this bad boy. So that comp is really working and it's noticeable in how you shoot the gun. Completely manageable, I would say. Most any semi-experienced shooter would have no problem shooting this gun quite well. So now let's talk about the energy levels that we were able to achieve with the test ammunition that we had on hand. Now, a lot of the ammunition is either underwood or buffalo bore. And I didn't set some buffalo bore down here on the table to show you, but these are boutique cartridge companies that manufacture high-end ammunition, meaning max pressure type of stuff. You're not going to find super high pressure max loaded cartridges from your big manufacturers like Winchester, Federal, you know, Spear, all, you name it. Um, they don't load that hot for safety reasons. They don't want to get sued if something blows up because somebody puts it into an old 1911 from World War I, let's say. All right, so let's talk about the velocities that we're able to achieve with the ammunition that we were able to purchase. So the 460 Roland, I have a little cheat sheet over here. The 460 Roland, had, and we tried to keep the bullet weights comparable if we could, with a 185 grain bullet was traveling at 1,426 feet per second. 185 grain bullet doing 1,426 feet per second. That's astounding. Now, a 44 Magnum can push a 240 grain bullet at that same velocity. So there's a big difference in power between this and a 44 Magnum. Just wanted to bring that up because I mentioned 44 earlier. That gives us a foot pound of, or feet pound, foot pound, whatever, 835 foot pounds of muzzle energy out of the 45 Roland using the 185 grain Underwood ammunition. That, my friends, is impressive performance. 833 foot pounds of muzzle energy is substantial. 44 Magnum gets up into over the thousands, but for a handgun, that is quite impressive. Now, by comparison, the 45 Super with the same 185 grain bullet was doing 1,223 feet per second, which gave us 600, 615 foot pounds of muzzle energy, considerably less than the 460. And the 45 Super, I used to think was pretty impressive, but let's continue. The 45 ACP using 185 grain hollow point uh, did 1,193 feet per second, which gave us 585 foot pounds of energy. So a little bit less than the 45 Super. And then the 45 ball, we had a 230 grain ball, just a federal factory load for range ammunition. It clocked over the, our chronograph and all this, are, these are our numbers. This isn't reading them off a box. Uh, it, we got 834 feet per second, which gave us 355 foot pounds of muzzle energy. That seems pretty darn anemic. I mean, everybody loves 45 ACP for its stopping power, but when you look at these numbers, 355 foot pounds of muzzle energy versus 835, there's a big difference there. 45 seems pretty anemic when you're comparing it to the 460, but it's still quite lethal. And don't get me wrong, 45 ACP is a great cartridge. Now, by comparison, 10 millimeter, my pet cartridge, I couldn't find a 185 grain bullet, but I did have some 180 grain buffalo bore loads. They call them their heavy loads. They're hot loaded. We clocked that 180 grain bullet doing 1,354 feet per second, which gave us 733 foot pounds of energy. Number one, 460 Roland. Number two, 10 millimeter, and then all the rest. So 10 millimeter is no slouch, but it still gets eclipsed by the 460. One of the things about the 460 that draws me to it is because just like the 10 millimeter, it fits in standard sized handguns. You don't have to use a Desert Eagle. You don't have to use some massive Smith & Wesson revolver. 
this is a cartridge that literally fits into a standard handgun. So now let's talk about the performance and ballistics gelatin of the 460. So we always use clear ballistics in our testing. It's a silicon-based gel. It's not organic-based. And I need to throw this disclaimer out there that gel, either organic or silicon-based, does not represent human or living tissue. It is a simulation of one type of tissue and not even a very good one, and that's muscle. The human body and animals and things like that have so many more different types of tissue from bone to you know all sorts of connective tissues and things like that the, the densities of that tissue will vary so ballistics gel is meant for testing and getting consistency in those tests that's why the fbi says 18 inches of penetration is ideal 12 to 18 inches of penetration in gel is ideal and then people will say well that's stupid it's going to over penetrate no it's not i've shot living animals with handgun cartridges that do more than 18 inches of penetration and the bullet didn't make it out the other side of the animal. That's because the animal is nothing like the ballistics gel. It's just for consistency so you can compare one cartridge to the other in terms of its performance. But it's not going to tell you how it's actually going to perform in living tissue. All right, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about what we discovered with the 460 Roland. Now, I didn't have a chance at the time uh, the 460 Roland website was out of ammunition. I really wanted to try some of their hard cast ammunition because when you're talking about dangerous game like bears and, and, and stuff like that, you don't want a hollow point. You want a solid bullet. You want a hard cast bullet. You want something that's heavy and solid because you want maximum penetration. A bullet expanding in a bear isn't going to kill the bear because the bullet's going to stop before it reach a, reaches a vital organ. You need to punch a hole all the way through it or as deeply as you can into it and hope to reach a vital organ that will stop the attack. So this, we only had some 185 grain jacketed hollow points and we discovered the same thing that we discovered when we were doing our testing with the 45 Super. 45 ACP bullets appears to be what most reloaders are using. I don't know about the guys over 460 Roland. They have their own ammunition. I was not able to get my hands on it. They may have better bullets, but in terms of companies like Underwood, Buffalo Bore, they're using what seems to be standard 45 ACP bullets and they simply aren't designed to travel at the velocities that the guns are capable of launching them at. So what do we see? Well, with the 45 Super, the bullet, every single time, hits the gel, goes in a minimal distance, anywhere between eight to maybe 10 inches if you're lucky, but the bullet flattens out into a perfect disc and just kind of slides in and comes to a stop. Not ideal. Doesn't come anywhere near the 12 to 18 inches of penetration, and that's with a pretty hot loaded 45. So when you step that up to 460, the same thing happens using a 45 ACP 185 grain jacketed hollow point. The bullet hits the gel, but it's moving so much faster than the 45 Super, it literally takes a bonded bullet, rips it apart, lead goes out at about the four inch mark within the ballistics gel, big shards of lead bloom outwards, start in like, a, like a star pattern out from a flare, and then the jacket and a little bit of lead that's left in it will make it to right around 10, 10 and a half inches, and then it stops. So this is the clear ballistics gelatin, and this is 185 grain, 460 rolling. Comes in here, quite a bit of disruption to the gel, right at four to five inches. We see a bunch of lead fragments. So it's split, the, the bullet casing has opened up, split lead out, and it goes from four to about a little over six inches. Lots of lead fragments. And then the jacket, with what looks to be a little bit of lead left, makes it to about 10 and a half inches. One of the other things that Underwood had on hand was their Extreme Penetrator. And this is a machined copper bullet. Now this is a bullet I would use for dangerous game, okay? It's not a hard cast, but it's certainly capable of incredible penetration, and that's what you're looking for for something like that in terms of self-defense. So we fired, <laughs> we took the blocks, we turned them around, we fired the penetrator, and you couldn't do this if you tried. But with the, the freshest block in front and then the previous block, which had a, a couple of different tests uh, conducted in it, I'll talk about those here in a moment, uh, was in the back. It was the catch block, if you will. So this is the Underwood 200 grain screwdriver tip bullet, extreme penetrator, 460 rolling. Came in over here. It actually left more of a wound channel than like the 45 ACP ball did. Came all the way through that first 18 inches, came in here, ricocheted off the 460 Roland, the first test that we did, the bullet, 
Looks like it knocked what core there was in that jacket out, caused it to go left, and then it literally hit the 230 grain ball round right in the nose. So it made it about 27 inches in after it hit that and bounced back. And it hit it with enough force that there is literally a bubble around that 230 grain bullet, like tissue damage around that 230 grain bullet. So had it not hit those two bullets, I have no doubt that it would have made it out the other side of this block. And it's also interesting to note that perhaps these super hot rod cartridges benefit from solid bullets versus hollow points. Hollow points just seem to come apart. Now we did also shoot, the, we shot the 45 Super, flattened out into the disc, 460 rolling, blew up about 10 inches of penetration, 45 ball round, 834 feet per second, 230 grain ball round. It darn near cleared both blocks. It went straight through the first one, went deeply into the second one. I wanna say it made it, um, yeah, I'll just show you the pictures. I don't want to make up numbers here uh, off the top of my head because we did the testing a few days ago, but it almost made it out the block. So the 45 ACP, even though it's slow and lumbering with a ball round, it's more than capable of deep penetration, which makes it a really good cartridge. I've often said in the past, I would much rather take a ball round than a hollow point that's untested, something silly like the stupid rip ammunition that was popular years ago with the trocars that shear off at two inches into the gel and then the base makes it maybe six inches, eight inches in. Ballistics gelatin doesn't paint the entire picture of the power of any given cartridge rifle or handgun. As I've already mentioned, it's intended for one particular type of testing, but again, it doesn't tell you the whole story. There's other things, things that you can do. You can shoot through barriers, you can shoot through any number of things, but what I wanted to do, because I could feel the power the gun had, I know by shooting steel plates, it becomes obvious if you start off with a 22, work your way up to nine millimeter, 357 Magnum, 10 millimeter, 460 Roland, you will see a difference in how those bullets hit those plates, how fast it slaps them down, and how much lead dust is created when the bullet hits at high velocity. It literally vaporizes, and you'll see a cloud around the plate rack, and that cloud isn't dust, it's lead dust. And that's from the bullet literally exploding. So we went down to the plate rack and we did a little bit of shooting with the 10 millimeter, the 45 and the 460. When that 460 hits that plate, it hits it with such authority, it knocks it straight down as fast as it can, and you just see a bunch of stuff just come up instantly, dust, lead dust, from around the plate rack. Huge plume of smoke. Every single time you hit one of the steel falling plates, huge plume of lead dust, and just you can hear and see the authority at which that bullet is striking the plate. That helps to paint a more complete picture because 10 millimeter, a little bit of dust, it, was, it definitely put the plate down with some authority. Nine millimeter, meh. 45 ACP ball, patink, falls right over. So in that, we could certainly see the power this thing is capable of generating. So therefore, if you choose the right bullet for the cartridge, you're going to achieve incredible results. So what do I think of the 460 now that I've had a chance to shoot it? Guys, I'm in love with it. Now, the downside is ammunition can be hard and expensive to buy when you do find it. You're not gonna walk into your local Cabela's or your local gun store and find ammunition sitting on the shelf for it. If you're a hand loader, it's definitely a hand loader's cartridge, but it's still something that I was able to get online and buy with relative ease some ammunition. And therefore, I would say above 10 millimeter, this is probably the ultimate dangerous game self-loading pistol cartridge out there. It way surpasses 45 Super, 45 ACP, if you want more power than this, you're gonna to have to look at a Desert Eagle and 50 AE or 44 Magnum, which is just a huge useless brick to me. I don't care for them at all. Or you're gonna to have to look into purchasing a revolver and 44 mag or something up all the way to 500 Smith & Wesson. But in terms of automatic pistols, 
I don't think you can beat this, guys. I'm really impressed. I want to thank you guys for commenting and pushing me in this direction because I never would have considered buying one of these if you guys hadn't pushed me into doing it. So we do read your comments because you give us ideas for videos and we like to answer the questions that you guys have. So please comment down below. We will stick around for the first few days, read those comments, respond when appropriate. And again, it helps us come up with content ideas here on the Military Arms Channel. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. You'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll also have direct access to me. I answer all private communications. We can have direct dialogue, some other perks. There is a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you got the little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button and support us here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out Copper Cut. Custom.com. Thank you for 14 years of support. We truly do love you guys. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon.